Well, good day, friends. It is great to be with you on this beautiful Monday. I am so thrilled to be in the Word with you again, and we are in the third chapter of Proverbs. We're going to pick up at verse 11. This morning, we're going to get into a focus on when the Lord corrects or disciplines or, or rebukes us for uh, wrong actions or wrong paths or wrong words. And, you know, I, I think we're all in the same boat. We struggle with this. We, we don't like being corrected. We like to be right. We like to get it right. And so we struggle when we get it wrong and we, we face that correction. Uh, but that's exactly what Solomon is counseling his son in this morning. And I think his words have just a, a rich value for us in our lives. And so I invite you to hear as he opens up, he says, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son that he delights in. And, and so Solomon opens up and he says, when this discipline comes, when this rebuke comes, when this correction comes in your life, my son, don't, don't be upset about it. Don't be angry about it. I know you don't like to be wrong, but there are times where you make the wrong choice and the Lord wants to guide you back to the path that is right and good and true. He wants to guide you into the path of the, the word and the path of the will of the Almighty. And so don't, don't resent this, but rather embrace this because this is how God treats you because God loves you. When, when we think about that, we, we sometimes use the example in, in church that uh, to think of a parent who chose not to correct their child, who just chose to, every time they make a wrong choice, just, oh, well, you know, let, let, them, let them figure it out on their own. Let them give it their best shot at life. And, and to do that, that, that would be an act of cruelty, to give no guidance and no instruction in what the path of right and good and true is. And so that's why our Lord comes and desires to bring this correction, this course correction into our life, because he loves us, because he doesn't want to see us go headlong into the path of sin and rebellion. So along the way, bit by bit, situation by situation, action by action, there is this correction, this, this rebuking. And there's an older word that's used in a lot of Bibles, and that's the word chastening. And I actually like that word. It's, it's, not, it's not really commonly used today, but I think it captures a little bit more of this, this correction of the Lord, that it's correction not just by punishment, but it also can be correction by suffering. Okay, what, what do I mean in terms of correction by by punishment. Sometimes there are, are consequences in terms of the Holy Spirit uh, laying an inner impression on, on our mind or on our heart that, that we have displeased God, that we have walked in a wrong path, that the Spirit witnesses to us, that to us. Or that there are brothers and sisters in Christ who, who come alongside of us and, and challenge us and, and correct us. They, are, they become the Lord's agent or the Lord's ambassador in that time to draw us back to the path of the right. We know in Scripture we're encouraged to do that with each other. To, to hold one another accountable and to draw each other when we've fallen astray. So to draw each other back onto the path. But there's a third way the Lord corrects, and that is through suffering. Now, we might struggle with this, like, why would the Lord cause suffering in my life? Well, the Lord isn't causing the suffering, but the Lord is permitting it to happen. We, we talk about it in our conversation, where we, we make statements of, oh, he reaps what he sows, or she's getting her just desserts, or, you know, we, we aren't exactly nice with it, but um, there, there are things where, our consequences, the Lord may not be able to grasp our attention through brothers and sisters in Christ or through the inward guidance of the Holy Spirit, the correction of the Spirit. So sometimes we need to learn the hard lesson, learn the hard lesson of enduring the consequences of choosing to go our way. So that's what it means when it talks about that, that image of the Lord corrects by both punishment and, and by suffering. And that's why I like that word chastening, because that really captures uh, that twofold way that God brings us on the path of right. So God is, is committed to helping us walk in, in a good path, to helping us live in the blessed life that he has purposed for us, and that he's designed for us. So I, I'm excited. I, I love it. I mean, it's just, it's so awesome to see how much the Lord loves us, that he will discipline us and correct us, not just abandon us or, or leave us to our own devices and, and hope that we get it right but that, that he wants to draw, draw us to the path of right so much so that he frees us from sin and frees us for joyful obedience. All right, well, let's get on with our scripture. So in verse 13, it says, 
Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. For she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. And so again, it's reaffirming this thing that we've been walking through in Proverbs about the deep value of wisdom. And so, you know, part of that wisdom comes through the correction, through the, the, the correction of our course when we've been rebellious. And Solomon's just encouraging when that comes into our lives, not to... to to undervalue it, but to recognize that when our course has been corrected, when our actions and our attitudes have been corrected, that this is rich wisdom that the Lord is pouring into us so that we can live life in a better, more blessed way as we walk forward. So that she is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways. and All her paths are peace. She is a tree of life for those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. So you hear that ending verse. Of, She's a, a tree of life. I mean, we want, we, what does that mean? It, it's, it's the element that our abundant life, our blessed life, our life in which we have joy and peace and wonder, and it, it, it comes when we live our lives in accordance with the wisdom of the Lord. The other option is living according to the counsel of the world. And the counsel of the world is to be rebellious to God. The counsel of the world is to walk in the way of rebellion and wickedness. And it usually results in wounding others and causing pain to others because the world is so born of, of greed and want and getting my way and, and, and being able to do whatever I please. And then there's much suffering that comes of that. And so the Lord is, is, is urging us to draw upon wisdom. And we hear those words through Solomon here. She is a tree of life, and those who take hold of her, those who hold her fast, will be blessed. That's the promise of our Lord, a blessed life. Oh, friends, I, I want to take hold of it. Listen to verse 19 and, uh, verses 19 and 20, because these are they're really unique. They, they seem like they take a break from this section. It says, By wisdom the Lord laid the earth's foundations. By understanding he set the heavens in place. By his knowledge, the watery depths were divided and the clouds let drop the dew. And so we, we think about these images, like why, why is this all of a sudden being drawn up? And you look at the, the intricacies of creation. You know, we, the, the image of, of God creating the heavens and the earth and the universe and, and, and all that is there, that everything is created in this perfect design. In fact, physicists and scientists say that our whole universe is created in a just right manner. That, that all of the gravitational forces, all of the, the lights of the stars, of the everything in the way that it's crafted is crea crafted in a way that it is just right. And, and that may sound really odd, but the, the, the positioning and the size and the heat of the stars affect whether there are uh, rocky planets or gaseous planets or uh, when you sit there and you look at the, the gravitational forces, if they were any greater, it would alter the ellipses in which we are, we're running around the sun. It would alter what, you know, how the gravitational forces affect us here on earth. They describe this as a just right set of circumstances for us to inhabit this planet and for our whole solar system to work, for the whole universe to work the way that it does. Now, I, I, I'm a science guy, but I have not delved into that aspect that deeply. But when I hear that those who are in the field are attesting to the fact that, that this is really an essential thing in order for us to have the life that we have, that our universe operates according to an incredible, intelligent, wise, and knowledgeable design. And that that same wisdom, here, here's what our scripture is, that the same wisdom and the same knowledge that God used to create the heavens and the earth is the same wisdom and the same knowledge that God pours out to us that we may live our lives by it. Friends, there, there's nothing like it. And so let us be like, let, like those who have walked before us and drawn upon the wisdom of the Lord that we may know this blessed life that the Lord offers us. Oh, praise God. The wisdom of the Lord. What a precious gift. Let's pray this morning. Gracious God, we confess. We don't like being told that we're wrong or that we're walking around along the wrong path or making the wrong decisions. But Lord, we know that you are right and good and true and that you desire to pour that into our lives. 
And that when you correct us in our way, when you rebuke us, Lord, it is for our good and our blessing. And so, Lord, we seek that blessed life that you offer to us. Lord, help us to walk in that path of wisdom. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, friends, be blessed, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Know, and know that God loves you, and so do I.